In this video, I'll share with you the top five worst investments I ever made. The reason is I don't want you making the same mistakes. And save the end, number five is something a lot of people are investing in right now. Before I dive in, if you're new to investing or want to get better at investing, you're in the right place. You're at Ticker. We're all about clear, confident investing. Number one, private companies, not public companies, not stocks. I'm talking about private companies. And there's really three bullets that fall underneath. Number one would be small businesses. Two would be new tech startups. And number three would be pre-IPO stocks. So kind of define each. If you're building a small business or if you have a friend or family member building a small business, that's great. That's a great way to make a living. But keep in mind, most small businesses are not highly scalable. I'll give you some examples here. Think of a restaurant, ad agency, which is a business I had in the 2000s. Maybe you're a photographer. Maybe you're running a hair salon. Maybe a car dealer. Dealership. Again, all fine businesses, great way to make a living, but you're not going to build your wealth by investing in it. If somebody comes to you asking for money to help fund your business, say no. You can give them a little time, expertise, but tell them, go to your local bank because local banks, they're much more motivated to invest in small businesses than they are the second bullet, which leads to tech startups. So rewinding the clocks back 10 years, Plus, in fact, probably closer to 15 years, I would invest in new tech startups. Either I would start a new business or I had a friend that would start a new tech startup. And that's highly risky. I made some money, but I lost some money as well. I'm surprised I even broke even. But it takes a really long time to find product market fit and actually create a profitable business. You're much better off using Ticker to buy a few strong stocks, you're gonna make a lot more money. So similar to the small business play, if you've got a friend or family member that's creating a tech startup, don't invest your money. I recommend you invest a little time if you have expertise, like let's say it's marketing or sales or whatever, you can do that, but tell them, go to a local bank, try to get a loan. Most cases, they probably won't get it because new tech startups are quite risky. You know what, you're gonna to have to tell them, bootstrapping is your option. You gotta keep your day job and use a little bit of your paycheck to build that business. All right, and then the third bullet in here would be pre-IPO stocks. I learned my lesson with IPOs or pre-IPO, so that's why in our training or the onboarding with Ticker, we talk about try to wait four consecutive quarters after a business goes public. And you wanna look at really two things. One is making sure that EPS is profitable and increasing quarter over quarter, and two, make sure they're beating their earnings estimates. If business can do that, after four quarters, then consider investing. But other than that, try to avoid it. So what I did, and I've been pretty good at identifying good business models, is I was approached by a few investment banking firms that asked me to invest in pre-IPO stocks. Stocks that are still public, but expected to go public within like the next six to 12 months. So I could secure a lower share price. And then when it would go public, and if it was a strong business, it would uh, I would see pretty good returns thereafter. Well, again, highly speculative, highly risky. And the big issue here is I made the investment and here we are four years later in the businesses I invested in. I can't give you the names, but they are still private. My money is locked up. With any of these investments I'm talking about, there's no liquidity. You can't get your money back. So my money is stuck somewhere when I could have invested it in some of the stocks I hold today, which include Palantir and Nvidia and Apple and Microsoft, I could have made a lot more money. So I'm I'm really upset at myself for making these private investments. Maybe they'll be profitable someday, but at this point it's like, it's almost a write-off, like this is stupid. So overall, don't invest in private companies. All right, moving on to number two. This is a slight deviation, but I do have to share my lessons learned here. Number two would be bad employees. So I had a bad habit and I've since corrected that habit, which is hiring fast, firing slow. You need to flip that equation on hire slow and fire fast. And I had this issue with other businesses in the past, as well as with the current business here, Ticker. All the issues have since been corrected, but I took a long time to learn my lessons here. So I'll give you some of the red flags here and then uh, talk about what I look at now. So I had people join the company that they didn't want to listen to the customer. They would use language such as the customer doesn't know what they want. Customer doesn't know what they're talking about. The customer is dumb. That's 
horrible, that's toxic, and those people need to be removed immediately. So if you hear any language like that in your business, I would get rid of those people. Well, I let that go on because I needed certain people for certain skills, but yet that attitude of talking bad about the customer continued. There are also issues where these same people, they wouldn't communicate, they wouldn't talk to other people in the company. Communication is the biggest breakdown in business as well as marriages. Communication is key. So you got to communicate. When you don't have people communicating, that's a problem. Another issue here in line with that is going silent, not talking to even me over, we're talking not just a few days, but over a week, and then coming back and saying, oh, I was busy. So you can't send a text or a message on Slack saying you're going to be back in a few days. Like there was none of that. It was absolutely horrible. And then similar situation i've had people they're hired for a specific skill in the business but then because they feel like they're smart with that skill they can apply their knowledge to other areas where they have no experience that's a problem i like to use an analogy let's say you're the gm of a football team and you hire a wide receiver and also that wide receiver shows up and now wants to be the quarterback they also want to be the fullback. They want to be the center. They also want to serve on special teams. That's stupid. In most cases, most NFL football players, they're going to focus on their single role and not going to try to jump to other roles. Well, I've had people that try to do that. When you're a real professional, you focus on what you're good at and you lean into it. So um, those red flags I can spot from a mile away now. And then the last thing is, and this is another sports related analogy, and this is how I hire people, is I'll ask the question, give me your definition of court awareness or field awareness. And if you're an athlete or if you uh, enjoy watching sports, you know what that means. It's like when you're in the game, you don't need to be looking directly at your teammates. You know what needs to be done in order to put points on the board. Well, I try to hire people like that. They know what needs to be done. They communicate with each other, but they don't need to be going to people asking how can I help you? Are you facing any problems? They should already know and then go make heads up plays. I use that phrase all the time as I'm, I'll tell my guys and usually my guys are very, very, very skilled in this is they're already making heads up plays. I don't have to tell them what to do. That's a team member you want. And that's why a ticker, long story short, we hire very slow. And if I see any red flags, I fire very fast. I don't give any second chances. One mistake, you're gone. And in that, usually I see the red flags now, but I'm looking for those team players. So in your business, if you're building a business, your own business, or if you work for a company and you're in the hiring process, you know, please learn from my mistakes. Try to hire slow, fire fast. And my advice is try to look for those people that have field awareness or court awareness. They know what needs to be done to put points on the board. All right, moving on to number three, which is whole life insurance. So you might be asking, why in the world would I invest in that? Well, before I created the Excel version of Ticker, which was around 2015 or 16, this was probably around 2011 or 12, there were a few advisors that pitched me. There are a few advisors from a very large organization. You would recognize the name, but I'll refrain from saying the name. They pitched me on whole life insurance for two major benefits. One is it creates an annual rate of return. And two, if, of course, if I were to uh, pass away, my beneficiary gets all the money. Um, and it doesn't matter. There's no timeline there. It's the entire life. Well, I created the Excel version of Ticker, started generating returns between 15 and 50% per year. All the credit goes to Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and Phil Town. But uh, because of that, I started raising questions to these advisors, asking them, so what kind of returns am I getting with this whole life insurance product? And they knew what I was working on. So they were very apprehensive about sharing that information. And I kept prying and kept prying. And finally, it was like pulling teeth. They showed me the statements, you know, quarter over quarter and year over year, what kind of returns I'm getting. And it was like 6% per year, which is awful. The S&P 500 is like 8%. I'm like, guys, this is not even keeping up with the S&P 500. What are we doing here? So they didn't like that. And then the straw that broke the camel's back really leads to number four, which is weak index funds. These same guys put me in some funds and you'll know where I'm going on this. There are certain advisors that are given pretty much orders to push a certain product, whether it's a mutual fund, index fund, maybe a 
insurance product, and then they're paid a commission or a bonus based on that. Well, these guys were pushing some product that was constructed by their organization. They weren't being fiduciaries to work in my best interest. So it was all in their favor, not mine. And I start looking at the returns of those products. Again, I had to pry that information out of their hands and see the same thing. It's not even keeping up with the S&P 500. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm managing my own investments. I've created this Excel sheets and I'm going to move forward with this. And they hated that response, but we've since parted ways and never talked since. <laughs> and it, we know how this story worked out. Ticker, you know, went live in 2020, four years old. We've got over 10,000 customers, blah, blah, blah. I won't bore you to death on the story, but the tool works. It helps a lot of people. And if you go to the back testing feature in Ticker, you can see our returns. I mean, nothing really compares to it. And so I highly recommend do not put your money in whole life insurance or uh, weak index funds. If you want life insurance, I would go term life, not whole life. Term life is significantly less expensive and it's set up over a certain term. You can go like 20 years, 25 years, whatever you want. Anyway, all right, moving on to the last point. This is point number five. This is where a lot of people are investing right now, which is crypto. So here's my story with crypto right now. I do not invest in crypto. I did invest in Bitcoin and Ethereum. I did not get in at like $100 on both, but I got in at a lower price before the first big spike a few years back when Bitcoin went to $60,000. Well, the roller coaster fell off and it, it just went down and then back up to $60,000, I think like a year or so thereafter. And now it's, I mean, taken off like a rocket, but I created Ticker for one reason is to really sleep better at night because I know with high probability, high certainty, 99.9% .9 certainty, the businesses I invest in are going to make me money over the long term. It's just, I love that about the tool. So I sleep better at night. Well, with crypto, do I sleep better at night? The answer is no. And I'm talking to a lot of people right now. They're asking me, should I sell? Should I get out? And in most cases I'm saying I probably would because some people believe they can calculate where it's going, but in most cases, they cannot. And number two is the energy consumption on Bitcoin when it was a lot lower priced was like equivalent to how much energy it requires to power the country of Finland per year. It's it's crazy. Well, now that the Bitcoin price is increasing, the energy consumption is increasing, which means the scalability is decreasing. So some people say this is going to like $200,000 or half a million or whatever, it's, it, it won't. It's just energy consumption. When it gets to those levels, it'll be multiple countries equivalent in energy consumption. It's just absurd. So I would be extremely careful if you've made a profit, you know, this is not financial advice, but I would say, Hey, what, uh, what else could I invest in? That's more certain and will help me sleep better at night. So just my two cents on crypto. If you made some money, awesome, good for you. I have heard of people saying, hey, I'm thinking about taking out a second mortgage on my home, which I've heard the stories of people doing that and they lose it all. I would not, I would not do that. So anyway, those are the top five worst investments I ever made. If you have a moment, scroll down, leave a comment on what stupid investments you made. Please share with the other people in the ticker community. We try to learn from each other. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you're gonna see more videos like it, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in buying and selling stocks with confidence, I invite you to join Ticker for free. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.